a good morning. Uncle Lou here. Uh, yep, I uh, haven't done one of these in a while. But, uh, yep, welcome to this uh, post-apocalyptic uh, edition here uh, of Coffee Talk with Uncle Lou. Uh, yep, if you've never seen one of these videos before, uh, this is a series of videos that I do. Uh, yep, uh, where I drink coffee and talk to you. Now, uh, I'm catching a lot of heat over this uh, post-game video I did for the Georgia-Alabama game. Nice guys finished last! I'm not trying to change your mind. I mean, I completely understand, uh, you know, those who support Coach Rick. Um, until Saturday at 6.30, I was one of those people. I have been arguing with Georgia fans for the last five or six years. Um, in, in favor of Coach Rick. I've been the biggest Mark Rick supporter. Um, you, you couldn't have found a bigger Mark Rick supporter than me. Um, so, you know, a lot of these people who are, who are jumping on me saying, oh, one bad loss and you, you're on the fire Mark Rick train. I have gone round and round with Georgia fans who wanted Coach Rick fired for years now. Uh, and I've always come down on the side of Coach Rick. You know, it's just not true uh, or accurate to say that because of one bad loss, uh, you know, I'm no longer supporting Coach Rick. That's just not the case. First of all, no one loss bothers me at all, ever, period. Um, even going back to Alabama's recent run, Alabama's only, under Nick Saban, has only had one undefeated team. You go back and you look at last year, uh, forget the national title sh shots or, or whatever. We lose two games last year that we had absolutely no business winning or losing at all, and both can be squarely placed on coaching. The South Carolina game. South Carolina was a 6-6 six and six team last year, a 500 team. They were terrible, um, just awful. And we somehow find a way to lose that game. Uh, you know, you got you Georgia fans remember it. Uh, first and goal on the four-yard line with the best running back in college football, Todd Gurley, and he doesn't get the ball. It just doesn't, you know, it just didn't make any sense at all. No business losing that game. That was coaching. There's no other way to defend that. Uh, on top of that, the South Carolina game was off of a bye week. Now, name me one good coach on any level that consistently loses after a bye week. A bye week is supposed to be an advantage to a coach. And to great coaches, it's a huge advantage for game planning, scheming, and things like this. Uh, it, it's just inexcusable to lose to a 500 team that has no business talent-wise hanging around with you in a game. It's inexcusable. Here, same thing with the Florida game. Florida was a terrible team. Their coach had one foot out the door. Again, off of a bye week, Georgia shows up, or actually doesn't show up, lays a complete egg, gets ran off the field by an overmatched Florida team. Just embarrassing. Uh, it, it's not the Alabama loss in and of itself. Uh, you can't look at any one game in a vacuum. Mark Richt has been there for 15 years. To judge him off of one game, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. We haven't won an SEC since 2005. Well, you say, well, the SEC is the most dominant. True. Most of that dominance has taken place in the SEC West. Tennessee and Florida have been god-awful. There's no other way to describe it. Tennessee fans and Florida fans would agree with me. Uh, Florida had a, a, a horrible stretch under Will Muschamp. Tennessee has not recovered since they fired Philip Fulmer. Uh, so y you would think a team as loaded as Georgia uh, could make a couple of runs uh, during the last five or six years when these other two teams are down. Well, it hasn't happened. We we you know we made one we won one SEC East title. Uh, we lost in the championship game to Alabama. Uh, Missouri, who couldn't even win in the Big 12, comes into the SEC. They win the East two years in a row with half the talent of most teams in the SEC. I'm not trash-talking Missouri. I'm praising Gary Pinkle, example of a coach who gets more done with less. And I'm just, I'm tired of Rick getting less done with more. 
Uh, you can go back to 2007, 2008 time frame. We had Matthew Stafford, A.J. Green, and no Sean Moreno. Okay, three first rounders, three offensive first rounders, couldn't win the SEC. Uh, I'm just, I'm tired of it. And and you you only ever hear two arguments in favor of Coach Rick. The he's a good guy argument. Okay, I get it. He's a good guy. That's great. Uh, and the other argument is, look at Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee won a national title under Philip Fulmer, and couldn't they couldn't repeat that success. They they hung around the 8, 9, 10 win mark under Philip Fulmer. They decided to make a change. Everybody knows what's happened since then. They've been a complete train wreck and a disaster since then. And Georgia fans are scared to death that if they run Mark Richt off, something similar may happen. That was the argument I've been using for the last four or five years. I don't want to revert to six, seven wins a year. However, I'm getting close to the point where it's a risk I'm willing to take. I don't know how else to... In my opinion, if we lose another regular season game this year, we should move on. Um, you, you look at who's left on our schedule. Um, Tennessee can't win a game. Missouri, terrible. Uh, Kentucky, they should have no business hanging in a game with UGA. Uh, Florida and Georgia Tech. Outside of Florida, none of those teams should come within two touchdowns of UGA on a, on a, on a talent basis. Uh, UGA has more talent and depth than any team in the SEC outside of Alabama. And it's pretty close with Alabama, which makes what happened on Saturday uh, even more of a head-scratcher. Florida's been a complete train wreck the last couple of years, hovering around 500. A few, uh, what was it two years ago they won four games and lost to Georgia Southern? They've been terrible. They make a coaching change. Jim McElwain comes in. Jim McElwain has the same players, the same quarterback, the same defense, the same everything that Will Muschamp had, and they look like world beaters. They humiliate Ole Miss. Now you tell me, you tell me, is it coaching? with Florida. What is it? If it's not coaching, what is it with Florida? Same players as the last couple of years. Look at the results. Uh, with that being said, we should still beat Florida this year. No more regular season losses. Uh, we should run the table. We should win the East and roll the dice in Atlanta. Uh, I, it looks like it's either going to be Alabama, Ole Miss, or LSU coming out of the West. But if we lose another regular season game this year, how do you defend it? Uh, I just, I don't understand it. We have a top 10 recruiting class every year, uh, top five most years. The talent gap between Alabama and Georgia is not what it appeared to be on the field on Saturday. If the talent is there, what do you have left? Coaching. That That's the question that I have. I You know, telling me I'm not a real fan because I, I wouldn't be disappointed if, we went in a different direction than Coach Rick, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, judging someone else's fanhood is one of the dumbest things you can do. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. You're welcome to your own opinion. This is just my opinion. Uh, so telling me to get cancer and die, uh, although it is a decent attempt at a troll job, uh, doesn't really do anything to solve uh, George's problems. So just keep that in mind. Uh, now, second topic here. Uh, NFL. Uh, now, uh, I did notice that Tevin Coleman rushed for, for zero yards uh, for the second week in a row, and Todd Gurley had 166 total yards. That's not really what I want to talk about, not the fact that he had 166 total yards, but the Falcons fans, particularly the ones that that are just blind and saying that, that Tevin Coleman's better than Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley's going to be a bust. If you can't see what a moron you are by now, then there's really no helping you. Todd Gurley is a once-in-a-decade talent. It's got nothing to do with me being a UGA homer. Uh, read a scouting report. Uh, you know, go to ESPN. Read the articles that were written on Todd Gurley pre-draft and post-draft. But it, there's, there, in no way, shape, or form is Tevin Coleman anywhere near the caliber running back uh, that Todd Gurley is. That's just ridiculous. This was his second game in a year coming off an ACL surgery. Uh, you know, he, he averaged close to seven yards a carry yesterday. 
which is unbelievable in the NFL. And uh, to say that, to, to try to compare him to Tevin Coleman, I, I, don't, I just, it's, you just have to shake your head at people like that. But, and the Falcons are 4-0. I will give the Falcons credit for being 4-0. I didn't think they would be 4-0. Uh, of course, they've yet to play or beat a team with a winning record. Uh, so let's slow down on the Falcons are going to the Super Bowl talk. Uh, something else that's just making you look like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> you have the 27th or 28th ranked defense in the league still. I told you Vic Beasley was a wasted draft pick. Uncle Lou was right. I told you Tevin Coleman was a wasted draft pick. Uncle Lou was right. Um, you know, Todd Gurley had 166 yards yesterday against the fourth best defense in the league, the Arizona Cardinals. That's way more impressive than anything Devontae Freeman or Tevin Coleman has done all year against garbage teams. Um, and, and the main reason why, and, and look, you can talk or type to your blue in the face about Devontae Freeman had three touchdowns yesterday or, or whatever in the week before and all that. That's great. He's playing good. I want to go back to week one, Falcons versus Eagles. And this is the point I was making all along, okay? All along. But I want to look at week one, Falcons versus Eagles, and then yesterday, Cardinals versus Rams. Week one, Falcons versus Eagles. Falcons take a lead late in the game. They go up by two. Uh, they get the ball back with, you know, just under two minutes to go. All you have to do is what? Run the clock out. Well, what happened? Three and out. The Falcons cannot run the ball in mandatory running situations. They can't do it. Uh, they just can't. Uh, they end up punting the ball back to the Eagles. Eagles had a chance to, to, to then take the lead. Of course, the Eagles are the Eagles, so that didn't happen. The Eagles threw an interception. The Falcons win the game by two. But that's not the point. point is, the game should have been closed out when you had the ball with a minute 50 to go in the fourth quarter and a two-point lead, and you couldn't get one first down when it mattered the most. You couldn't run. You couldn't run the ball. You couldn't run, you, you couldn't run the clock out. Uh, because you don't have a running back that can do it. Okay, now yesterday, Cardinals versus uh, Rams. Rams get the lead late in the game. They get the ball back with under a minute or under two minutes to go. What do you have to do? You have to run the clock out. You have to run the ball. The Rams were able to do it. Why? They have Todd Gurley, uh, and you don't. And the most impressive thing to me about Todd Gurley, this is a rookie making only his second start in the NFL, okay? 40, 50 seconds left in the game, he breaks a 30 or 40 yard run down the sideline. Nothing between him and the goal line, but green grass. This guy could have scored his first professional touchdown. What does he do? He slides down at the 15 yard line. So the clock would keep running. Smart. Unlike Tevin Coleman, who sat out his second week in a row with a stomach cramp, if you don't know the story with this Tevin Coleman, yes, he cracked a rib or whatever. He was medically cleared to play last week. He never had to miss any time at all. He was medically cleared to play. His, his ability to return is based solely on his pain tolerance, and he sat out two weeks in a row. So, you know, all these people saying, well, I can't get Gurley because he's injury prone. Tevin Coleman's a beast. Tevin Coleman better than Todd Gurley. You're just a moron and an idiot. Congratulations, the Falcons are 4-0. You beat three garbage teams, uh, and you beat the Cowboys, who only had half their offense. Congratulations, Falcons. Uh, th the good news is, for you Falcons fans, take a look at your schedule. You, you don't have a tough game until December, Well, and, that and that's against the Panthers. How tough is that, really? But if Falcons fans think they're going to get in the playoffs and beat the Packers, the Seahawks, uh, the Rams... Um, a healthy Dallas Cowboys team, you're sadly mistaken. So Falcons, you better hope that you that you get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. You better hope you get a first round bye, and you better hope you end up playing some crappy team uh, in in the in your first playoff game, or else you're going to be one and done. You're not any good. Um, you you don't have a running game. It's terrible. Your defense is still in the you know 26, 27, 28th in the league. Vic Beasley was a wasted draft pick. He can't stop the run. He's got one or two sacks and a handful of tackles. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, get mad if you want to. That's just the truth of the matter. Uh, but until next time, have a great day uh, and a good morning if you can.